I'm sitting with Johan Huber Gutierrez, a, a digital, um, what, digital maven, digital strategist, uh, digital guy expert. crazy stuff in digital. <laughs> yeah, you've worked with, with companies like Barnes, Barnes & Noble, you've worked with Macy's and Bloomingdale's. Uh, thank you for coming and uh, sharing a few minutes. Likewise, thank you for having me. Really appreciate you being here. I want to talk uh, about uh, customer engagement, uh, really in the retail experience, because this is the, uh, you know, the pot of gold for retailers. And right now, uh, I wonder if they're using it effectively to actually reach out and, and, and grab customers. What, in your experience, are, are, are retailers grasping this? Are they slowly migrating or are they running here, running in the mobile well, space? Well, I, I think if you look outside of the U.S., there's a lot of retailers who've really cracked the equation. Um, I would Outside of the U.S.? Yes, yeah, so especially in places like, like Japan and Korea, where I've, I've had the fortunate opportunity to work and, and be involved in some pretty innovative things, um, where you've seen people do um, huge volumes, I mean billions of dollars in business, um, even before smartphones existed. Hmm. And, and so that's kind of a, a bit of a misnomer that people feel that, that it's because of the smartphone that, that we can suddenly do all these great things. No, it's not. It's, it's because the carriers in the U.S. limited smartphones and the user experience on smartphones in the U.S. was very poor. If you look at places like Japan, Korea, etc., you'll see that the user experiences, um, the, the design were, were simple, they were easy to navigate, I could get to what I wanted to get to, and I made transactions um, I reduced the transactional costs so people could, um, the, the digital ecosystem was able to grow and develop. Um, when you look at the U.S. and some Latin American countries where carriers have historically taken huge chunks of the revenue, they've, cons they've really, how can I put, they, 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 they <laughs> they've really strangled the digital ecosystem um, in the mobile space specifically, um, but also they've also disabled um, cross-channel commerce in, in a lot of ways. And I think this is where I think Apple has been very helpful um, in what they were able to do in terms of really enabling things to happen off deck. Right. And, and enabling right. things to happen off deck, you're taking it out of the hands of the carriers. And, and I think that, that was the key thing that Apple did in the American market. And I think this is why in America we give a lot of credit to smartphones as, and, and Apple as a result. Um, but the other challenge in the U.S. is that the analytics tools that we rely on to measure are, are, are very poor. Right. Um, there's a lot of enterprise applications, um, enterprise analytics solutions that have been shoehorned into mobile and they rely on, on technologies that are web-based technologies, not right. mobile-based yeah. technologies. So a lot of people tell me, oh, I see all this huge traffic, it's all iPhone, it's all iPhone. And I say, well, do you realize the analytics tools that you're using cannot even measure other devices because the, the technology that's in, that, you're, that you're relying upon is it, it doesn't, it's, it's designed for web and that doesn't always translate to mobile. So, uh, I mean, there's a disconnect, obviously, about what's going on here. And, and, and is this a, a symptom of mobile first versus kind of mobile third, like the legacy I, stuff we're dealing I, with? I, I feel, you know, in, in the U.S., it's this sheeple mentality. It's yeah. kind of like a me too. Um, and, and a lot of people want to want to show the shiny object and, and show off to their boss. And, and it's really like trying to say stuff like, hey, look, oh, look, you know, I read an article in, in, in a trade magazine like Ad Age or something. <laughs> oh, well, we need to do that too. How come we're not doing it too? So everyone rushes in and they don't put a lot of thought into it. They just start copying each other yeah. and they all kind of like a bunch of lemmings go off a ledge and, and then they go, how come this didn't work or how come it wasn't as good as it could be? Now, I would say that was probably the last two years or so. Um, I think a lot of people who fell off that ledge, um, they invested heavily and they didn't see the returns that they wanted, um, started asking questions. And they said, wait, do we really have the talent in our organization? Do we have people with digital competency, with mobile experience, who can help us understand this and lead this? The, the challenge, if I look in, in terms of an organiza organizational hierarchy, is that you have some in incredibly brilliant people who, who've risen to the top ranks of these companies and they know their business. Right. Um, however, their lieutenants, um, who they task, um, you know, they'll hire on people to say, okay, we need to go after mobile. And they hire on some really great minds. And, but sometimes there's a communication gap in that these folks here who have a lot of experience um, and, and, and could tell you how things should work, when they try to send that message up, it, these lieutenants have a tendency of, of it, it becomes a game of telephone. And so by the time it works its way up to the highest levels of the organization, <laughs> the message has become watered down or, or it's, it's, it's become convoluted or it doesn't truly represent what it is. Um, and this has been my experience in a, in a lot of big companies that I've worked with, is, is that you, you come with something, you go, look, this is proven, I've done this before, I know it works, and then you try to introduce it to the organization and they go, well, we're going to do it our way. Right. <laughs> and right. so you have folks who are very protective of their little kingdoms, and, and rightfully so. I mean, you, you've got to be 
um, aware of those things. But by the time it works its way up, you get something which is not what it should be. So uh, when it comes to retail, is that, you know, I, I think of this as that we suffer from mobile groupthink, right? And, and that's really what we're all in right now. It's a communal hug. And we, we might not be hugging uh, around the right thing right now. Uh, but it, it, you get these breakaway organizations that are that are really focusing on the core, which is the user experience about enabling mm -hmm. commerce and those kind of things, engaging with customers, and, and more so engaging with existing customers rather than going out and trying to find new ones and, exactly. and claw through. I mean, sometimes here, here's some of the things. It's like organizations have so much data about their customers, yeah. um, but this data becomes siloed, and and and. Organizations can't always access it. The, the people who need to use that data can't get to it or they don't even know it exists. Um, and then you add in the, the, the fact that in a lot of organizations, mobile is treated as a channel. Yeah. And I think this is a huge mistake. They silo mobile as its own individual thing, whereas mobile is really horizontal. Um, mobile is really extending all aspects of the business, all aspects of that experience with the customer. And so really enabling a team that can work as almost like an internal consultancy that can really reach out to the different st business stakeholders within the organization and say, what are your pain points? What do your customers want? And be able to come in and say, you know what, through mobile, this is what we can do to extend that, or we can make that easier, we can make it more accessible, so customers don't have to go into the store all the time, or they don't have to wait on the phone, or they don't have to go like log into the website, what was my login, I can't remember, yeah. oh darn it, I don't have my store loyalty card number. Right. And, and, and right. so mobile, the, the idea that you know, I can extend all these things, make them you know, easily accessible in one place, that, that, that uh, I think is a very compelling proposition. But if you're not enabling the people in your organization to harvest that data and, and bubble that data up into a place where everyone can reach it and give the customers access to their data and the data that matters to, to, to your customers, it's not going to be a good experience at all. So there has to be some examples of, of retailers that are out there doing something right, that are, that are doing something, and not just engagement, because engagement is the opening sequence of this. Right. Engagement all the way to lifelong customers, driving commerce, closing deals. Mm -hmm. I, I, I always say, you know, look to the east. Um, <laughs> you know, east. I, I, I feel that, you know, this is one of the, the big impediments that we, that we have here in the US. Our big handicap is our lack of um, language, um, it, it, that we're not really good at speaking different languages, and, and, and as a result, we're cut off from this. There's just so much that, that's been done already in Asia. There's so much precedent. Yeah. Um, there's so yeah. much success stories. Um, you look at how catalog companies, for example, are driving 68% of their transactions through mobile. Um, and people go, how do you do that? Well, you know, think about it where you have a camera phone and you're able to sit there and, and someone doesn't want to necessarily have to write it down and then call in. Yeah. Um, or, you know, they're on their couch, they're relaxing, they don't want to have to, um, you know, go to their computer. They can literally just snap pictures of, of the products they like, you know, whether it's, you know, actually recognizing the image itself or sometimes they'll put like a code or a QR code, something to this effect. Yeah. Um, and you're seeing real dollars being driven through this. Um, or even people using SMS in an intelligent way. Like if you look at, for example, what Perry Ellis did, um, you know, where they, they were seeing very high um, <laughs> redemption rates um, through SMS. Um, I, I think that, that people are not fully leveraging all these channels. Um, you know, also things like, uh, you know, if you look at some of the text to buy applications, you know, that, that SMS can be used as a tool where you can actually do a transaction. Not many people right. think about that. that but it's can, not as sexy as, a, as an app, right? And right. I think that's what we're suffering from here. Yeah, I think everyone's obsessed with the shiny object. Now, yeah. I always look at, I look at it from, you know, what's the base? You know, what's the, the most basic way that you can make a transaction easier for the customer? Are yeah. you enabling one-click transactions? Yeah. First thing. Um, Right, the first thing that you should you be know, doing. You know, companies like, um, you know, if you look at Billing Revolution, I think has yeah. been doing yeah. some really great work there. I mean, if you look at what they've done with Zynga, for example, um, where, you know, Is that people, Andy Kleitsch's company? Yeah, 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 Andy. So, like, yeah. when, when you're, you know, on Zynga and you want to be able to buy virtual goods or stuff, they've made it so quick and simple and easy to make that transaction, boom, right through, you know, I want to get this little toy, I want to get this thing for my character, I want to buy this uh, for my, you know, for, for this particular game, and I can literally just make that transaction happen within a single click yeah, yeah. Um, without having to force the customer to go and log in and, and, and get like all this stuff. Like, you know, it's just the more things you're asking the customer to do, you know, you're just putting more and more hurdles. Um, but I'm also excited about things like um, some of the things that are happening with like Clear Exchange, where um, you know, you're so, like in, in Japan, this has been uh, you know, there for a while, where people were connecting their bank accounts you know, directly to mobile. Um, and so we're going to start to see this happen in the U.S. And, yeah. and as a result, that's really made things easier. I don't have to carry around, um, you know, my wallet as much. I don't have to carry around piles of coins. Um, and, and this is something where I think people put. So that's a key thing. And I don't want to interrupt because, it, you know, um, it's such an ev like it's a it's a it's an, a revolutionary leap to move from cash 
to a virtual wallet or an e-wallet or a mobile wallet, right? But what you're talking about is, listen, just enable, enable your phone to get to your bank account. It, it's a natural first step, but everybody's thinking up here, and we haven't even done that yeah. first transition. I, I mean, everyone's chasing NFC, and I, I'm a, I love NFC and yeah. what you can do with it. Yeah. Um, but think about it. Um, we've had NFC in, in credit cards for a long time. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know the exact step, but it was something like over 20% of, of, of credit cards out there have these. But yeah. less than one, like a fraction of a percent of people actually are using these things, um, these, not, these contactless you know, credit cards. And you look at how few phones have NFC now. Yeah. Sure, there's going to be a lot more phones that will have it, but still, it's going to take a it's going to be a good three to five years until we have a lot of penetration on this and a customer feels like they have a good reason to use it. Yeah. In Japan, if you think about it, one of the reasons why people got behind it is it solved some, some pain points. Um, you didn't have credit cards. Yeah. Credit cards were, were barely getting adopted when, when NFC came out um, in Japan. And this was, this was a big thing is a lot of people um, for transportation were using you know, their Suica um, tied to the Felica chip. Um, that card, I could go through the turnstile faster. I could link it to my bank account. So I didn't have to carry this purse of coins because there yeah. a lot and of I people- I didn't have to keep charging up my card. And right? I didn't have to get in line to like, keep, like, yeah. you know, get behind other people at the, at, you know, at the machine to, to recharge my, my, my card every time. I could just literally, um, it's connected to my bank account. Boom, I can go through the turnstile faster. I don't have to carry yeah. more stuff. Hey, that solves a pain point. It's easy. It's something I'm already doing. I'm, in America, people have been swiping credit cards for a while. So you're going to have to do a lot to change that consumer behavior. And you have to think, what, what are you going to put out there? And I think you know, Google and, and a couple others are trying to put some good value behind why you should do it. And yeah. I think we're going to yeah. see some good things there. But it's still going to be a while till I think we have a significant penetration that you know you can really say like hey you know this is gonna be a big driver of our business we could spend the whole day with this but I really appreciate Johan you coming in and sharing this because I, I your, your enthusiasm is pulsing through here I really appreciate you doing this <laughs> well hey, thanks, thanks for, for coming on it was a pleasure I really appreciate it likewise